Hey there, Scorpio. Welcome to your reading for April 2023. We're just going to jump in here and in your current general energies, you have this card that says, uh, know that whatever decision you made, it was the right one. It says, see the good in what you call bad. Nothing in your suffering is meaningless. Uh, I always say one of my favorite people of all time, Eric Thomas, the hip hop preacher says that at the end of pain is success. And, um, you know, it's so true. <laughs> so uh, I think that too many of us go through something painful uh, and we don't get the gold. We don't get the reward for the things that we've been through. So I feel like part of this reading is definitely encouraging you to uh, not only go through healing if that's what you need to do. Uh, you know, this could be a breakup, separation, could be anything. And here you go, you have the star. Star comes up after the tower. So, you know, you could be healing from a tower moment in your life that you've had recently. Um, could be anything. But I also feel like you need to kind of like get the gold, you know, like I said, I feel like you need to get your reward. And the only way we can do that is to not give up, to keep pushing forward. This is a very good reading, Scorpio. Look at this. There's clearly like a lot of good stuff. So, you know, I, a lot of good cards. So I feel like some good things are coming in for you. Could be some changes in your finances as well. And uh, yeah, just looks really, really good. We'll take this card kind of flipped out. So we'll just take it and put it to the side, but you start with the two of cups. So clearly could be love. I literally said to all the water signs at the beginning of the reading, at the beginning of the year, that once we got to like the end of March into April, May, June, that love would be getting a lot better for water. So, you know, and um, it's definitely been true. And what I would say here is that I think that love could, your love life could be improving if you want love. You have that, you, that Knight of Cups flipped out <laughs> and you have the King of Cups here, Hierophant, you know, really good love energy. Um, so I'd say if you want love, uh, could be coming in for you. If And, uh, you know, I would also say for all of you that the Two of Cups to me represents you and your higher self. It can represent like communicating with your higher self. Um, this could be through dreams, daydreams, uh, could be through the vibrations that you put out into the universe, which we see right here and also right here. The Eight of Wands was traditionally the arrows of love, meaning we tell we you know tell the universe what we want and love the universe responds. But you know Esther Hicks calls this sorry I'm choking now calls this our rockets of desire where we're telling the universe what we want the universe responds and so I feel for a lot of you this could be anything that you're attracting into your life and it's like you could be communicating with your higher self chariot is as above so below uh, he has these stars in his canopy moons on his shoulders represents as above so below so I feel like you could be it's like you're manifesting very very quickly right now which again Neptune and Pisces is manifestation on steroids like again we can attract things very quickly um, the problem with Neptune and Pisces is that it's not always clear how we manifest those things. One of the ways that we can improve our manifestations right now is to get other people in on it. <laughs> With the three of cups, it would represent like teamwork or a person who can help you or a person who is also very positive. So, you know, I'm a big fan of surrounding myself with only positive people, which I know I, it's very hard nowadays, but um, it is possible as someone who does it. And what I would say here is that doing it helps you manifest much more quickly. And I definitely feel that could be happening for you. I also feel that for some of you, this could be a celebration because, you know, you have this card, you have the five of cups, um, but your five of cups is going to the star to the eight of wands going this way up to here. So I feel like you could be attracting someone in your life, but you have to see it. And again, with Neptune and Pisces, we have to take action. You, you see these two cups behind him. The action he needs to take is just be grateful for what he has in life. Then he needs to, then he'll see this bridge in this castle. You know, I always say that, you know, to me, tarot isn't positive or negative. There's a solution to every single card that exists. So it can't really be either. It's like you can either take advantage of the solution and you'll get the benefits or you can do nothing and, you know, obviously not get the benefits. So you decide <laughs> how tarot is for you. Again, you can also get good cards and do nothing with the energy. Uh, but that's the same thing with the five of cups. You know, if he turns around, he can greatly improve his situation. So, you know, I do feel like this is saying that you've been through some disappointments. I think these disappointments have to do with competition in love. And, and, and I kind of mean that in both ways. It's like, you, some of you, I feel like a person put you in competition. You know, maybe they were cheating or seeing other people or whatever. Uh, for others, I feel like some of you entered into a past relationship that just was competitive. It's like some people just don't want to work together. <laughs> and that makes it competitive, right? That's what it, it's not like a competition, but it's like a competition to see who can do more or who can do whatever, right? So some of you might have been in that. 
Uh, with the Two of Cups, you have this assertion card. I feel like you could be asserting yourself more. It's like you're demanding what you want from the universe. I'm a big fan of doing it, of demanding what I want from the universe. And yes, demand. some people might say that's a negative energy, uh, but it's really not. Uh, it's about being assertive, sticking up for yourself and uh, getting what you know you deserve. The, the, the trick is, is that you have to r rise to meet the occasion. It's like, obviously, if energetically, you're not at the level that you're demanding, you're not gonna get it. But if you demand something because you do the work, then you're gonna get it. With the Three of Cups, you have the organization card here. Mm, I would be careful of being too organized is what I'm getting here. It's a good card, but you know, for some of you, you might have an idea of how things have to go in relationships or whatever, and this could be holding you back at this time. I don't know, it's, that's what I'm getting here, so I'd be careful of that. I would just like allow things, I would be like more flexible is what I'm trying to say. It's like you might meet a person, and like I feel, I kind of get that feeling where if you're meeting a new person, which it looks like you could be, that things are not gonna go according to your plan. You know, <laughs> I think things, and it, it's not that it's gonna go according only to their plan either. I just think it, maybe you, you know, I would be careful of those expectations, you know, building a story about how it's gonna go and then it, then you get disappointed, right? I think as long as you don't do that, things will go well. Uh, with the five of cups, you have this defense card. Uh, you could be a little defensive. I don't think this is a bad thing, by the way, Scorpio. Um, you know, you could just be trying to protect yourself a little bit. The funny thing is, is I think if you're attracting a person right here, um, I actually think they're the emperor. So it could be an Aries, but it could also just be a water sign or an Aquarius or a Taurus that's coming in for you here, Scorpio. But the thing is, is that I think they have a very similar story. And I've been saying this to you for weeks. So, um, you know, this person keeps popping up, you know, it's, and even here, you have this abalone shell and it says here healing from the inside out. Um, but if you've ever seen uh, the shell of the abalone, <laughs> then you know that it, it almost has that iridescence. It has like a shininess to the inside of the shell. And, you know, it's kind of like mother of pearl and it's almost like a mirror. And I feel that, like, I feel like some of you could be attracting someone uh, who has been through something very similar to you, or they could be just as defensive as you are. And again, I'm not saying that in a judgmental way. I'm just saying, you know, they could just be defensive, like, and you could also be trying to protect yourself as well. And, um, you know, uh, I wouldn't really worry about it, is what I would say, because, I don't know, the reading looks very positive, so I feel like you will both open up. But it just might take a little bit of time. And again, as I said earlier, you know, maybe opening up to this person wouldn't be a terrible idea because like I said, it seems to me like things are not going according to plan. I can't escape that message about this a new person. But again, it's not like in a bad way. I just think that it's encouraging you to be careful of your expectations, but also opening up could actually make things go more your way. You have the Hierophant, the Star, and the Temperance card. Really, I there's so much control in this reading, you know, uh, temperance chariot is a card of hard control. The emperor is also a card of control. The temperance card isn't really, it's not really a card of control, but it is a card of taking control because, you know, he's pouring the water back and forth between those two cups. And it says that he can turn a positive into a negative and he can turn a negative into a positive, right? Just like I said earlier in the reading. So I feel like this is saying you have the power to turn any situation in your life around or turn it into whatever you wanna turn it into. But again, I feel like you have to take control here and you have to see that it's possible and you have to do the work. Just like I said with Neptune and Pisces, probably the most annoying part of Neptune and Pisces other than all the other annoying parts of Neptune and Pisces don't even get me started. But what I would say here also is that he's leaving this city behind him behind on the chariot card. You have this distant horizon card. I'm just adding everything up here for you, <laughs> doing some math. Even though, tr uh, trust me, I failed algebra all of high school. How I graduated is a miracle, right? But what I would say here is that I feel like you have to, it's like you're entering into a unique situation. You know, this could be with a person. It could be you changing your job or your business. There's something unique about it where you're gonna be setting yourself apart. Uh, but I also feel that there could be some worries because again, you know, it's like whenever we enter into a unique situation that we've never been in before, it can be a little bit scary. We don't know what we're doing maybe, or, you know, whatever the case may be. But you have the star. It's like, you're ready for this. I also feel like you see the big picture. On top of that, she's pouring this water here. And this pool is the pool of universal consciousness. And you can see these ripples that are going out on this pool of water. And the whole entire reading is saying that, like, I really feel that you're providing a lot of feedback to the universe right now. And I feel like the universe is responding. 
the Hierophant is the bridge between the heavens and the earth or the universe and the earth. You know, he bridges the, the two things together. So I feel like the universe is responding to you and responding to the energy that you're putting out. Uh, and I also feel like you're getting some things that you really want. You know, the interesting thing that I'm getting here is that, you know, sometimes I think people wonder why... Um, there have been many stories, let's put it this way, of people who have been in very difficult situations or have been through a very strong uh, breakup. I always use the example of the breakup, right? I've read for people where it's like they go through a breakup and all of a sudden their money improves. <laughs> and I'm like, why do you think that is? It's because of what they're focusing on. They're focusing so much on the pain of the breakup that they completely take their focus off of the money. So it allows the money to flow, right? They're, they're kind of, uh, you know, Esther Hicks says they're not pinching themselves off anymore, right? They're opening up the hose basically and allowing the money to flow in because you're not focusing on it. You know, we have to, fo I believe that we can also focus on things to attract them to us. But again, sometimes I think when we remove our focus from something and stop worrying about it, we're removing the worry, it allows it to flow into our life. And you know, that's kind of popping into my head here with the Hierophant. I feel like some of you, it's like you, maybe you're saying, oh, my fin finances suck right now, but then you attract love. <laughs> and you could be attracting a person who has money uh, or something like that. Or you could be going through a breakup and you could be focusing on just the breakup. And again, it's like attracting money into your life. I don't know. I get something about that with the Hierophant. But I also believe that we can use this to our advantage and we can start uh, training ourselves to like not worry so much about breakups so that we don't push love away. Um, you know, maybe if you go through a breakup, you just say, you know what, I'm going to focus on myself. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to start getting healthy. I'm going to change my life and, you know, do all this other stuff because, you know, it's like clearly, I believe that we attract who we are for sure. So it's like if you attracted that bo past bozo, maybe that's who you were in the past, but you have to change it now in the future. And uh, if you do that, you'll attract a better person, which is kind of like what I feel like you're doing here. Uh, with the Hierophant, you have this drama card. Yes, I would be careful of any past people. Too, mu too much drama. Also, you know, at the beginning of the month, we, we are going to be, uh, you know, Mars is changing, is going to have changed signs, but it doesn't matter. When a planet changes signs, like especially at the beginning, it's still kind of dragging that energy behind it. So, you know, Mars and Gemini energy was all about avoiding drama. And I would definitely avoid drama. I just wouldn't even take part in it. With the star, you have this companionship card. There you go. Could be attracting a true companion. Uh, this could also um, kind of say that there are people who want to help you. And I said this at the beginning of the reading with the three of cups. So I think that uh, kind of like, uh, but it's more about your surroundings is what I was getting. You know, the people around you, if you're around super negative people, your life is going to be super negative. If you're around super positive people, your life is going to be positive. And again, you don't even have to know these people. There are plenty of dead people that I watch every single day on YouTube that uh, kind of make me feel more positive, right? So there's plenty of people, there are people I don't know on YouTube that I watch that make me feel more positive. I'd be very careful of what you're feeding your brain. You have the, uh, with the temperance card, you have this negotiation card. Mm, I, I really feel like saying no negotiation. It's funny, Cancer had the same thing. Um, but with temperance, it's like going back and forth. The negotiation card is kind of like settling to me. Um, that's what it's saying. That's actually not what the card means, but I read intuitively. And again, I'm getting something about settling here. I feel like this is saying there's no need to settle in any area of your life. Uh, next in the area of what you need to hear right now, you have this house card and this distant horizons card. Uh, both cards can represent moving and you have the eight of wands, the chariot and the king of cups. Believe it or not, the king of cups can represent a move. To me, it's a clue card. Uh, there's certain cards in the tarot I call clue cards and I call the king of cups the house or the home. So, you know, to me, he can represent moving. There's a boat behind him, which can represent going on an adventure. So, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if some of you were moving or traveling. It also wouldn't surprise me if like something you've been waiting for is showing up quickly here. All of a sudden you have the eight of wands, the chariot and the king of cups. So I kind of feel like something is coming in for you. Um, and you have this card that says, Know that whatever decision you made, it was the right one. So I kind of get that here where some of you, maybe you chose to walk away from something and it's like you're going in the right direction. Two eights, you're, you're doing the right work, chariot. You're moving away from something that was established just like he's moving away from the city that's established and he's moving maybe towards the king of cups. Uh, you know, this kind of sums up all of this uh, right here, this king of cups, because he's kind of like listening to his emotions. He's sitting in the very deep ocean, which represents his deep emotions. There's choppy waters all around him, which is just like life. You know, it's like really, there's a lot going on right now in the world, very choppy waters, but he's perfectly fine. The whole point is that he doesn't care what's going on around him. He stays focused. He also is not afraid to go on an adventure. That boat behind him represents 
like a, the time a time where our great great ancestors would get on boats and they would you know they wouldn't know where they were going they wouldn't even know if they were going to hit land so it's kind of like the king of cups on a very deep level is kind of like a card of discovery and needing to discover something new and it looks like to me that you are discovering something that's going to be a victory or success could be love but it could also be anything <laughs> you know it could just be uh, something that sets you apart uh, the whole point of the chariot is kind of like to set yourself apart and that's exactly what i would do here you have the eight of wands which is quick success so i feel i really feel that i feel like quick success or something uh, that's happening very quickly uh, but let's get more detail on that because uh, it's not coming in. I do feel like there could be communication, by the way, or there needs to be communication. Haven't I? I've said this to you before. Pretty sure. With the Eight of Wands, you have this Lost card. Uh, this is Saturn and Pisces, and we have Saturn and Pisces right now. So I do feel like some of you are feeling the loss um, with this card, um, if you have experienced some sort of loss. But I also feel this could just be saying that uh, you're moving in a new direction. So, you know, I, I feel like that's going to be a good thing. With the uh, Chariot, you have this Authority card. You have two cards of Authority right here, um, Emperor and the Authority card. Some of you could be meeting a person who is like an Authority figure, like maybe they're a boss. Um, they could just have some sort of Authority in life. Uh, they could have a leadership role in work or business, and that's probably the thing that is going to stand out to you. And it definitely could be an Aries. Um, take it how it resonates. It could be any sign, but uh, it could also be an Earth sign or a person with a lot of Earth in their chart, I'm getting. With the King of Cups, you have this excitement card. There you go. So it could be, it could be a Cancer, by the way, because Cancer had the excitement card in uh, this deck here, the uh, Tea Leaf Oracle. So again, some of you could be a Cancer, but um, I do feel like there's a lot of reasons to be excited, a lot of new opportunities coming in for you. So definitely like to see that. Uh, at the end here, you have this Observer card and this uh, Odd Jobs card. It says, consider creating multiple streams of income. Sometimes it's okay to take transition jobs, even if it doesn't lead to career. It's crazy to me how I basically said this to Cancer, and I'm going to say it to you, that if you need a job and you can't find exactly what you're looking for, I think that we're in a time of stepping stones where it's perfectly acceptable to take a transition job. So definitely do that. Or if you're working on a side hustle, really good card. This Observer card to me is saying that you're finally seeing results. Like, so if you've been working on a side hustle or a business, I feel like you're getting some results that you've been waiting for. You have the Eight of Pentacles, the Emperor, and the Five of Wands. Eight of Pentacles would represent results. Uh, Eight of Pentacles, like, working hard. He's working very hard on those Pentacles, but he's very focused. He's pretty much only working on those Pentacles. He's not really focusing on anything else other than those Pentacles. So I do feel your focus is going to be very important. But what I would say is that this card to me represents material success on the horizon. So I do feel there's like a lot of success coming in for you based off the hard work that you're doing. Uh, you also have the Emperor and the Emperor is about taking control. We talked about this in your reading, but I do feel like you could be attracting an Emperor type person, someone who's in control, someone who is ready for action, someone who kind of like uh, also, I, I, I really feel that you will notice that this person is very much in control of their life. Like they, I, I feel like they're like the most clear part about them will probably be that they don't wait for anything, not in an impatient way. I think they don't wait for things to happen to them. They make things happen for them. And that's probably the big difference here between like what you've experienced in the past and what you're experiencing now with this new person. And that's popping into my head very clear you have the five of wands but this last row is meant to represent the good stuff so it's going to be good no matter what and uh, i do feel like there could be a lot of competition for this person so like i said you could be attracting a person who's very attractive or you're very attractive probably both of you are very attractive so there might be equal amounts of a, of um you know uh people attracted to you but again i think you just want each other i also think both people in this situation you and this person here I see this as the same person, but it's like both people, um, you know, I feel have been through something very similar. So, and I'm pretty sure I've said that to you like in the past 10 readings. So if I have, then that would definitely make sense. You also have this Knight of Cups. Again, definitely could be like a Knight in Shining Armor uh, coming in for you, but let's see. With the Eight of Pentacles, you have the Secrets card. I would be, I would say no secrets at this time. 
I actually feel like if this person feels like you have secrets that they will bounce. So, you know, I would be careful. Like I wouldn't hide anything or don't try to hide things from this person because uh, I feel like they will notice and they will leave very, very quickly. That could be their story as well. Um, but this is showing up in the good stuff. And again, this is considered a good card. It is Venus in your sign in Scorpio. And it can say that there's like more to a story and it can encourage you to learn as much as you can. If you're working on a project or a business or anything like that with the Eight of Pentacles, I would be learning as much as you can about whatever it is you do because um, you know, with this secrets card, it could just represent discovering some information that increases your finances or makes you more money. With the Emperor, you have this romance card. Are you kidding me? <laughs> exactly what I was saying. This is clearly your person right here. I feel like it's very romantic. This card always reminds me of the Two of Cups. They even look very similar to how the two people on that card are dressed. So I feel like you could be attracting a person who's very different than your usual type as well. Two of Cups is a card which you start with that is meant to represent someone who's very different than your usual type. And it's also, I didn't even notice, Sun in Aries on the assertion card. So you're attracting a person who's probably very assertive, but could be an Aries or they have Aries in their chart. Uh, could also be Aries season that you meet this person. Uh, with the five of wands, you have this discovery card. Are you kidding? Uh, didn't I say something about discovery on the king of cups? Um, I feel like you need to discover something new. Some of you, this could be like a long distance connection. I'm wondering, you know, it could be someone long distance. Maybe you're gonna have to travel in the future to be with this person or something like that. Uh, I feel like it'll be good. We're gonna pull five main themes now and uh, see what is going on for you here, Scorpio. Uh, you start with this finger. It says, warning you of a problem either now or in the future. Um, I would definitely be careful of any past people. Again, we have a Mercury retrograde this month, so I would just be careful of that. Uh, you have this teapot card. It says, deep friendship with someone of the same sex. I, I do feel uh, with the three of cups, there could be a lot of guidance, not only from the same sex, but from pretty much anyone. And I'm kind of getting that here, that there could be a lot of guidance or help from people in your life. And, you know, I would like look for that guidance. You have this not card. It says unsuccessful plans. I feel like anything that isn't working, you know, I would be careful. It's kind of like a weird time, right? Scorpio, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's like, it's one of those times where I think we need to kind of know what our limits are in the sense that if we're trying something like a new project, new business, it's like we need to understand how much time we should give it. And the reason is, is because we need to, number one, give it enough time to work, but we also need to give things enough time to not work. And, um, you know, I, that's kind of popping into my head here. You know, I'll give you an example. It's like the one thing that changed my life significantly is I just started, um, you know, I used to come up with a lot of ideas and I would try to do everything at once, but I, I just started giving myself three months. That's it. I started breaking things down into quarters and I would say, okay, you, you can work on this one thing for three months. And I started getting way more accomplished than I used to. But I also think like three months is a good amount of time. Like if you're st starting a side hustle, if after three months you're not seeing results, you know, it's time to make a change. And again, I'm not suggesting that you quit. Maybe it's just time to make a change. But I feel like you need to kind of figure out what those boundaries are, where you should be um, quitting or not quitting, right? You have this hand card. It says, in need of help, assistance, or guidance. Yes, definitely a week to ask for help. So if you need anything, I would be asking for help. You have this light card. It says, stepping into a new experience. Uh, I don't know. I feel like this person is gonna suck you up into a like a whirlwind here. It could be like a whirlwind romance. You could be meeting a person who's you know, very successful and kind of like changes your life. So, you know, I would definitely go that way. It could also be the two of you. Like sometimes I think in these readings like this, it's like the two of you together is the thing that changes both your lives. You know, it's like, I, I, don't, I wouldn't really call it a power couple, but it's like, I don't know, if, obviously if you're meeting a very positive person and you're also positive, things are gonna become more positive, right? And that's kind of what I see here. Really interesting. It'll be interesting to see where this goes in the middle of the month, but that's what I have for you, Scorpio. So thank you for being here, Scorpio. Really appreciate it. And uh, definitely enjoy your month.